Hi, I'm Goha Vardanian and welcome back to the Guitar Etude series. Today we have Etude number one, Opus 60 by Matteo Carcassi. <laughs> So I finally got around to recording etude number one from Carcassi's 25 Progressive Studies. And you have probably noticed that number one, though it is the first one, is not the easiest one. So they're not actually progressive really in terms of the difficulty. Number one is definitely easier than number 25, but in the middle um, it gets kind of jumbled up. Um, and this is not the easiest one for, let's say, an advanced beginner or an early intermediate student because of all of the coordination that is required uh, for this etude. You are essentially playing scales. So that means your right hand has to alternate fingers, it has to cross strings, it has to move up and down, uh, while the left hand is changing with every single note that you play. So there's a lot of coordinating these two tasks and synchronizing them. And that's not really easy to do at first. Some of the later etudes, there is some sort of pattern to the right hand that you can set on autopilot, and you can just worry about the chord shifts, which makes it easier. So that being said, for, for this etude, if you are there and you are learning it, um, first I would say learn to play scales and learn to play them free stroke. As much as I love rest stroke scales, and most of the time I play them rest stroke anyway, in this piece I would play them free stroke because of the it's in a classical period being Carcassi and just uh, with the flow from the bass to the melody some um, back and forth between an arpeggiated pattern and a scale pattern the free stroke scales blend in better and it sounds better. Now some tips for the free stroke scales um, I would say for this one learn the C major the G major and the A minor because those are the snippets that you're going to encounter C major being the key the pieces in G major is the dominant of C and A minor is the relative minor so you will see snippets and it would be nice if you uh, you know recognize um, the scale that you're playing and you're not just uh, randomly following the sharps and flats and wonder um, and the natural signs wondering why it's there now for the actual technique of playing free stroke scales, I like to make sure that my right hand thumb is resting on the adjacent string of the one that I'm playing. So if I'm playing the first string, my right hand thumb will be on the second. If it's the second string, I'll move back. This allows me to keep this kind of rounded hand position, which means that I can play from the knuckle joint. I can have more power to, to dig into the string. Um, and not really yank the strings out. As soon as I forget about my thumb and kind of, let's say, leave it on a first string and a uh, sixth string while I play in the first string, now I can't really go from the knuckle joint because I'll hit multiple strings. In order to avoid multiple strings, we end up engaging more from the middle joint. So it ends up being a weaker muscle that we're using. And the sound is a bit more twangy and um, kind of bright and not as deep. Like I can try to make it deep but I end up forcing my hand into an uncomfortable position. The easiest solution is just bring my thumb down. Now it's ideal for playing with a bigger muscle and being able to get more power out of the string. So that's for the general technique. Now in this case, for this etude, uh, you won't always be able to do that because sometimes you have to mute the, the, the bass that you have played. So in this case here, right, so this on a fifth string but you're still very close you still can play from the knuckle joint here so I won't always be able to move and I really it's not
not really practical to always move every single time but for example here after muting the string then I move I take away completely because um, because I need the, the fourth string and I'll keep my thumb kind of close here and if I get a chance I'll put it there just for stability it's not that I'm glued with my thumb to the strings I am aware that my thumb is not doing this it's not forgotten about if I'm playing on a higher string so actually right after that passage I have to play an entire C major scale on the upper so upper, upper string so after this muting which I have to mute here I have to go to the first string and I'll take my thumb with me instead of leaving it here the biggest deal I can get a better sound moving here and attacking the string with more force rather than leaving it back here and having a harsher tone and being worried um, if I dig in too much I might hit the second string this way I can eliminate that problem so I'm aware of where my thumb is the next thing you have to be careful of is not to repeat fingers and this goes with your just learning to play your skill uh, scales um, always alternate in the right hand really think of it like you're walking down the street you're not going to be skipping because if you skip or repeat of hop on one foot and or hop on one finger you're going to create this kind of jump and it at a slow tempo it might not matter at a fast tempo when we are pushing our hand to its limit that inefficiency of movement of hopping on one foot it can just throw you off and make you ruin the rest of the scale because all of a sudden that continuous motion that you had was interrupted because you either slid from one string to another or you hopped on the same one. This happens more in free stroke because in rest stroke, for example, when you play a finger, it's resting on the other string. So it takes more effort to take it off and re reuse it again. So you're more um, likely to actually alternate. In free stroke, they're just swinging around. And especially if you are not alternating, and actually like in the movement you're not going back and forth and you're doing like this pecking motion you can easily forget which finger you just played and end up repeating that finger so that's another thing to keep in mind don't play it this way um, like where you're just kind of pecking at the strings and then on one foot maybe completely unaware what the right hand is doing you're just sort of plucking whatever your left hand is playing make sure you're alternating the the movement so if when I plays M is out when M plays I is out so when you do it this way you're less likely to repeat because your hand is in such position that you're already set up to play the next finger and then you're set up for the next finger then it would be way, way more difficult for you to actually take off let's say I'm here to take the finger that I just played to take it off from all the way back here and bring it back to play that would be so much effort uh, but if you're doing this like this kind of small movements you have no idea which one you played um, whether you're repeating or not so the technical part of it if you do it properly it already eliminates a lot of the problems now speaking for musicality of it once you can play through and you, you know the scales you're playing the alternations are there you're doing all the right fingerings you need to give this piece some shape um, because it can sound very boring <laughs> very fast um, so try to sing in your head the scale so in this case for example in the beginning you, you're just playing one C major scale descending right then you start the same scale a third higher so you're going a little higher and a little higher and you're descending far further so here, I would play a little bit louder, probably crescendo, because you're going into the dominant. And then the same thing happens in G here, start on the on G, and then a little third higher, and another one, and then you go back to C. So be aware of the, the contour that you're creating, usually trying to follow that contour helps. Um, it doesn't always have to start loud and decrescendo. In this case, when you modulate it to G, you did start louder because you had step uh, by a third gone up with each measure, but you actually had to crescendo. 
because you're going to the dominant so you don't always have to really follow the, the contour but have some kind of direction with each scale and it will help if you sing the scale um, in your head and see how you are how where the intensity is and what is your final note where you're trying to arrive and where is your turning point where you arrived there and you're going back um, around once you do that it will sound more musical and even though it has to be pretty even you don't have too much room for like crazy crazy rubato but you can you can take extra time Especially when you have big leaps in the um, in the intervals so this is a gigantic leap of an octave I wouldn't just play even though it's super easy I'm not gonna just rush it I'll try take extra time because as a singer it would be difficult to to leap um, and change registers in your voice unlike when we play in the guitar and it's right there for us so that's really it for, for this etude. It's a, it's a really great one to start implementing your scale technique into something more musical. Um, I didn't really talk about the, the end of it, uh, mostly because of the, it's, everything is repeated, but let's actually let's jump into it a little bit. So after you've played this uh, long scale, then you go to the A minor. kind of crescendoing to shape the line this and then it turns to the natural minor goes back goes up with the melodic minor and then goes to the natural minor and then the contour here so then it goes back and forth between the E and the F I give it a little bit of a lift and then here you have a bit of a conversation the conversation be evident be between the two voices and then here a little bit of a crescendo because it had creates this tension with the minor second I wouldn't really let, let it ring this that doesn't really sound that great I would take it off that also will make sure that it matches next one which is on the same string so the ones that are on two different strings make sure you take it off so here as well you kind of falling down but it's a sequence that you're playing and with a little bit of rubato how instead of just being a straight eighth notes it gives it a little bit more life and then with these chords this is probably a little bit tricky you have to know exactly what frets you're going for and with the first note that you're playing Some of sometimes I'll build the chord as I'm playing so I'm not trying to grab them in, sh in uh, blocks but rather and it's not an arbitrary amount of beats um, in between so I hope that was helpful um, pay attention to your scales the alternation the contour and I wish you luck with etude number one thank you so much for watching